Hey Strike Eagle fans, Notso is back with you for another tutorial on the F-15E Strike Eagle. Today we're going to do the IFF and the interrogation system uh, in the Strike Eagle. Uh, it sounds like there's been a lot of confusion since the patch dropped on uh, how to use these added capabilities uh, with IFF beyond just the, the normal mode 4 that is uh, uh, resident game. So our uh, radio chicken guide, uh, Gallinet, um, has done an amazing job of uh, actually modeling the IFF uh, and the interrogation system correctly uh, so we can go beyond just the, uh, the magic uh, IFF mode 4 uh, that's, that's on in the game by default. So the cool thing is uh, it's modeled correctly. The downside is uh, you actually have to pay attention to your, to your mode 4 uh, and other IFF settings. Uh, otherwise, you might get uh, uh, fratricided by, uh, by uh, other blue players if you're in a public server and you don't uh, set your IFF up correctly. So I'm going to walk you through how to do this, uh, hopefully the right way, so, uh, so you guys don't forget. Uh, just remember, it's not magic IFF uh, like some other modules. So I've got a scenario uh, uh, here on the map uh, with two tankers. I've got a, a west tanker and an east tanker. Uh, and I have these primarily to show you the utility of using the, uh, the other modes of, uh, of IFF uh, other than mode 4 so you can identify tankers. Of course, you've got to set this up or mission makers have to set this up correctly. Um, but right now, uh, I've got the uh, mode 3 set for the western tanker is 33-33. And the east tanker is 44-44. What we're going to do is we're going to interrogate uh, each of these so we can uh, show you how we differentiate the tankers. I've also got them set to mode 1-1-1, uh, one, 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 uh, kind of denoting a common package uh, mode 1 squawk for the day with all the players. I've got a, uh, a wingman out here. Uh, we'll say he got uh, separated from me while we were doing a BVR grinder, and I'm trying to get back together. And I've got him set on mode 2 which was common to uh, differentiate wingman. Again, technique only, uh, but we did that. So I've just got him set to uh, one, two, three, four, so we can rem remember that. And then again, uh, one, one for the package. And then I've just got a stray uh, F-16 out here up at 35,000 feet. Uh, and I've got him on a, a mode two, one, 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 uh, so we can see that we can uh, differentiate. We can find all mode two players uh, or we can find specific mode 2 players or mode 1 players or whatever the case may be. And again, once we jump in the jet, I'll differ differentiate that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and jump in and I'll, uh, I'll walk you through the system. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is kind of walk you through the uh, IFF menu um, to, uh, to make sure you know how to set this up. Noticed earlier when I uh, did the intro, I talked about the IFF and the interrogation system. It's super important that you guys understand that those are two completely separate systems. The IFF is what you are actually transmitting out for other players to interrogate. And then uh, the over here, the, the AAI and the EID menus uh, on the uh, right side of the UFC are what you are going to actually interrogate. Uh, those are different. Uh, so it's and I'm going to be a little pedantic, it's important that when you use the word, I'm going to IFF somebody, it's technically not correct. You're, you're going to interrogate somebody, but IFF is what you are actually squawking so other players or ATC agencies can see you. A, AAI, which means air-to-air -air interrogation, or EID, which means enhanced identification, are the two ways that you're going to, going to interrogate other players. So let's, let's stick to the IFF side, what you are going to squawk, because this is important. And I alluded to this, especially with the mode four. So in the UFC, um, whatever you have starred is what you are going to actually squawk. So in this case, I've got mode one, uh, one, one. And if I, if I uh, today, if I wanted to be mode two, or sorry, mode one, two, two, I can just enter it in the scratch pad there. Mode two is set through the mission editor. Uh, in the real jet, you actually set it through the, um, uh, the big uh, avionics door uh, just behind the radar, so you can't set it in the cockpit. So once you once you set it on the ground and take off, you're stuck with that code. Mode three is exactly the same as mode one, so you can set uh, anything you want. So um, we'll say you know two five four five whatever whatever you've been assigned, you can set it. And then the mode Charlie, which gives your altitude reporting. In combat, we normally turn mode uh, three and Charlie off, and then we would have uh, one and two as active. Really important, notice there is no mode 4 
on the screen. Mode 4 is done on a separate control panel that we'll talk about. A um, couple other things on this, and I'll, I'll brush over these really quickly. You can actually program this to be what's called phasing. So if you go in, into this, this is called phasing. So you can have uh, mo you know, phase 1, phase 2. And what this is for is if you had a, an air tasking order that said between uh, X hours and X hours, you know, you're going to have a different mode 2, or I'm sorry, different mode 1 and 3. Uh, you could set the times, and then when you cross that time, it would automatically adjust your uh, mode um, mode one and three, uh, or turn stuff on and off uh, as required. We're not going to get into that. Uh, it works, uh, but there's nothing in game that actually is going to use it unless a mission editor sets it up. So the, so again, the way you do that is you hit the program button, set up the phasing, and then deselect the program, and then you're back to normal. The final one is is you can actually slave your AAI. This is the actual uh, which one of the ways that you can interrogate, you can ha have it mirror to uh, whatever you're squawking yourself. So if you wanted to slave the AI to any whatever you're setting, it would automatically do that. So in other words, you can interrogate to whatever you have set for your own jet. We're not going to use that uh, today as well. Uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, show you, this is probably the most critical, especially for DCS, is this is the, uh, the IFF. So we'll... Uh, let's slide over here to the uh, to the IFF uh, window. Okay, so this is the IFF uh, control panel down here on the left side. It's in the front cockpit only, uh, and you can see it's down in this uh, lower left corner. Uh, so the switches that you want to be really uh, cognizant of is um, you want to make sure uh, that you are either in mode A or B. For most DCS, until mission makers uh, start adding uh, the capability to use mode Bravo, uh, you're going to default mode Alpha. What this is, what A and B is designed for, is um, if you are flying over the into the next ATO period. Usually, that happens at midnight Zulu in, in real life or whatever time they designate. It could it could be a random time, uh, but you would basically take off with two separate uh, mode four codes that are look. Uh, loaded to the jet. So these are the encrypted codes and, and the avionics guys would actually uh, inject those or we call it squirting them into the jet. So uh, on the current ATO period you would fly mode 4 alpha and then if you were airborne long enough to go into the next ATO, in other words you flew over midnight Zulu, then you have to make sure that you switch over to Bravo otherwise you could get shot down by uh, friendly uh, um, fighters or by uh, patriots or whatever the case may be. In, in uh, mode, I'm sorry, in DCS, I believe it defaults automatically. Everybody is on mode 4 alpha, so I would just leave that there where it is. Out means you're going to disable and turn it off. So just make sure you're not on out, uh, and you should be good to go. The other uh, thing to look at here is um, this uh, switch uh, controls this little uh, light panel and, and audio. So if you have it in light only, uh, when this lights up, uh, that means that you're getting a, uh, you're being interrogated by somebody, uh, and you're sending out a valid reply, which is good. So if you get a light, that's uh, that's a good thing. If you have it in audio uh, record or audio receive, this means that you're you, you're going to get both the light and an audio warning, and and it truly is a warning. An a, an audio warning is bad it means that somebody is interrogating you on mode four, but you're not putting out the correct. Reply either your key is dumped or you've got the switch in the wrong spot. So if you start hearing an audio record uh, warning sound, I'd probably go and investigate this because that, that's probably bad. It means that you might uh, be taking a missile to the face pretty soon. Uh, I would stick this in audio record. That way you get both the light and the, uh, and the little sound. Uh, again, in DCS, it's probably not going to really matter because uh, uh, I, I believe that it, uh, and I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I believe in, in, in default DCS, I think even if you have the switch in, in Bravo and somebody interrogates you, I think you're still going to send a, a correct reply. But just to be on the safe side, I would, I would probably leave that in mode 4 alpha, unless you know that you're in a mission where the mission maker has specifically set that up correctly uh, to take advantage of both. Um, and, then, uh, and then I would leave this switch in, uh, in norm, um, uh, th this is the default uh, mode. If you switch it to emergency, it means you're going to squawk uh, mode 37700 
And again, I, there's really no reason to do that. So I would just make sure that that's a norm. So again, just to recap, leave this in, in alpha for now. Uh, I would put this in uh, audio record. And on a cold start, this switch probably is going to be uh, in out. So make sure you turn it on. That's where you're going to get in trouble on, on uh, public servers is if you forget to turn that on after a cold start, uh, you could uh, wind up taking missiles to the face if uh, people are, are interrogating in, in you and you're not getting a, a, a good, I'm sorry, you're not sending out a good reply. So again, this is what you are actually squawking. This has nothing to do with what you're going to interrogate. So remember, keep those two separate. You have, it, you have a, the IFF side, which is what you are uh, transmitting out to other aircraft. The AAI and EID side is what you are actually going to interrogate other aircraft. Don't uh, confuse the two because they don't, they're, they're not really linked together. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, and jump in and we'll go back to the, uh, to the UFC. Okay, so we are, uh, we're back uh, in the, uh, looking at the UFC. I've blown this up just so you can see this a little bit better. Let me, uh, let me slide over here just the tiniest bit so you can see the buttons. Um, all right, so we've already talked about the, uh, the, let me go back out to the main menu. So the IFF is what we are squawking. This A and E stands for AAI, air-to-air -air interrogation, or E is EID for enhanced interrogation or enhanced ID. Uh, most important thing to understand about these is this is, in terms of purposes of DCS anyway, is both of these do exactly the same thing. Um, all it is, it just gives you two different options to set up your interrogation menu so, you have, uh, so you're not stuck with one uh, mode only. So don't overthink this. A A A A I and EID for the purposes of, of DCS are exactly the same. And, the, and for the purposes of the real jet, they are exactly the same when it comes to mode one, two, three, and four. They just have some slight differences with some other modes that we're obviously not going to get into uh, that are not relevant to DCS. All right. So th the reason that they're two separate um, menus is, uh, is because, it, like I said, it gives you the option to, to have the AI set up for one set of circumstances. For in other words, you may use that to, to find uh, friendlies, and then uh, EID, you may have it set up to, to mirror the ROE. So uh, ideally, you get all negatives. In other words, you don't get any positive replies, and that will tell you that you uh, can shoot guys. And that was the common way that we set it up. We normally use the AI for our, like our friendly interrogation, like we want to find a tanker or we, or we want to find our wingman. And then we would have the EID side set up for the, uh, for the ROE. So for instance, you might set it up to be um, uh, EID, you might set it up to be like negative um, uh, mode one correct code and then mode four. And if you interrogated on EID and got no responses, go ahead and take a shot at the guy because you've just met the ROE. Um, let's let's talk about the AI side. So we're gonna we're gonna concentrate for the moment on on uh, finding friendlies. So um, what I've done, if you remember, we had the um, the tanker, the West tanker set up to thirty three thirty three, and the uh, East tanker set up to forty four forty four, and then our our wingman was on one two three four. So let's kind of go through a couple of those scenarios. So let's say I wanted to find uh, all friendly players out there that were squawking mode one and mode four. So the HOTAS for this in the front cockpit is for AAI is the coolie switch left which or outboard of the of the jet. Uh, and I'm going to hold it down for greater than a second to uh, begin the interrogation. What you're going to see is you're going to see the AAI pop up here and it's going to work through whatever I have selected. So and it always starts with mode four first because that's the priority. And then it will go one, two, and three if I had those selected. So let's go ahead and uh, and and do that. So let's go. Uh, let's uh, set uh, normal to uh, mode three. What uh, C and N means is C means it's correct code. So for them to respond, they have to be on one one. Uh, if I had this in mode three as norm, that means anybody who's, who has mode three turned on, regardless of what this code is, is going to respond with a uh, with a diamond. Uh, the differences in, in the symbols is a, uh, mode four is going to return a circle and a mode one through three are all going to return diamonds. Uh, you can still get a diamond on a mode four, but that would be what we call low confidence. And you're probably going to rarely get that in, uh, in DCS. You're almost always going to return a circle. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna interrogate everybody on correct code mode one, everybody on mode three normal, which means doesn't matter what they have set, and they're gonna return a uh, mode four on alpha. There's, uh, you can also do a mode four normal, which means it'll interrogate both A and B, or you can set this up to be both A and B, and I'll get to that in a second. So let's go ahead and do that. So outboard for greater than a second, so see it's gonna go mode four, and now I'm getting those circles, and now it's gonna look for that mode three, normal. So let's go ahead and do that again. And over here, uh, this is the bar setting. You have a choice of, of two bar or four bar, which means two bar is pretty quick. For, in other words, it'll do two bars of each one of those that you have selected. If I set it to four bar, it'll do four bars of, of each one. So again, I'll hold it outboard for greater than a second. So, so it's gonna do four bars of mode four alpha. And you can see now that we're getting uh, correlated. I'm gonna pause here in just a second so we can talk through those. There's my mode threes, or I'm sorry, mode one, and then there's my mode three normal uh, there. So the cool thing is it will then show you uh, what the results of that interrogation is until the end of the bar, then it'll, it'll take it away. So let's do that one more time, and now I'm gonna pause so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause, and now notice that uh, everybody that has a contact on the radar that is correlated with one of the AI, you're gonna get a filled circle. So that means that everybody who is on the radar uh, is going to uh, show up as a, uh, as a solid circle. If I get an open circle, that means that they're, you're getting an interrogation, but they're not currently showing up on the, uh, on the radar. Um, so I'll show you that here in just a second. So let's unpause it. I'll go ahead and reduce, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, take everybody off. Remember that Viper was up at, uh, at uh, 35,000 feet, so I'm gonna lower the coverage to, uh, to be below everybody except for my uh, Strike Eagle, which is uh, down at 15,000. Uh, so I'm going to do that interrogation again. So outboard for greater than a second. Tell you what, let me uh, let me get rid of all the contacts. And now, if I get the open circles and open diamonds, that means those are uncorrelated replies. They're still out there. You're just not seeing them on the radar. And the reason that and the reason why that works, I'll pause that for a second, is because the uh, even though the the altitude coverage is is below everybody, so they're the majority of those contacts are 20,000 feet and above. Uh, the, the, the AI and EID interrogation antenna on the radar is much wider, uh, much higher and lower uh, coverage than what is set for the radar. So you're almost always gonna get a, a much greater uh, elevation than what is physically set on the radar itself. So that's why you'll get those uncorrelated returns that are outside of your radar coverage. So remember, Solid means it's correlated with the contacts. Uh, open means you're still there's a friendly out there. You just can't see him on the radar, and that's actually a really good trick. If you're trying to find a, a tanker and he's not showing up, go ahead and interrogate him anyway. And if you get a, a circle or a diamond, uh, you'll um, uh, have a much better chance of seeing him. So let's go ahead and uh, run that again, and auto act down. Uh, if you press auto act, it'll remove all the returns. I'll go ahead and get back into the into the coverage. See where I'm. Actually, uh, I should be able to see everybody now. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the um, uh, mode one and two. And now I'm going to look for my west tanker. So I'm going to interrogate only 3333, shift C, which will put a correct code. And now I'm only going to interrogate this one code out there. So it should be my west tanker, which is probably that guy right there at 24,000 feet. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Yep, so now I can see diamond only on just that guy there. So this is really handy. If, I, if I'm if i looking for a tanker and, I, and I've got a whole bunch of blobs out there, I can interrogate just a single code and now I've got a really good chance of, uh, of that being my tanker. Let's go ahead and take a lock on, uh, on that west tanker so we can get him to uh, lock up. As always, tankers are always in stealth mode. There we go. So now uh, I can interrogate uh, with a single target track lock. And the cool thing is, is he's now gonna show up and that uh, will latch 
and then that uh, diamond will show up here up in the uh, upper left corner. And both of those will stay for as long as I keep the lock. So if I uh, break the lock, uh, it will, uh, those will both go away. Uh, so now let's do this. Let's go ahead and select uh, one, three, and four with correct code, and we'll lock him up again. So now I'm going to manually uh, start the interrogation, and it's going to go four, one, two, th one, two, and three in that order. And again, as long as I keep the, the lock, it will show what I have positive. So um, this is really, really handy, especially when you're uh, doing the ROE interrogation. If I get negatives for all of those, shoot that guy. He's, he's probably a bad guy or very highly likely a bad guy. All right, so let's do one more thing while we're here is you have the ability to do auto interrogation. So you can do, uh, since I'm on the AAI window, uh, I can set that to auto um, uh, STT off uh, or PDT. PDT means it'll work in both single target track and in TWIZ. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. So we're going to do that as, a, uh, as an auto interrogation. Let's go ahead and uh, lock him up. And now it should run through that automatically without ever having to touch that. So now you can see it's already done the, uh, the uh, run through. And now it will always latch the highest priority um, uh, interrogation contact. So it, mode four is obviously your higher priority. So you're always going to see a circle up here. So again, if you uh, lock up a, a guy that you uh, think is hostile and I get, a, I get nothing up here in the window and it's all negatives, for what I'm looking for, go ahead and put a uh, missile into that guy's lips. Um, so that's really good there. So let's let's break off here, and we'll uh, we'll do another one. So let's see if we can find our uh, West tanker. So I'm going to go 44, 44, because I've already got to see it's going to stay uh, uh, correct code. So now my West tanker is probably this guy. Let's go ahead and lock him up. And now notice I've got a correct code. 44, 44, I've got my diamond because I don't have mode four selected and he's good to go. All right, so that's good. And let's now uh, look for my wingman. So one, two, three, four. And I'll do this in search. Let's see if I can find my um, uh, wingman. So now I'm gonna do a manual interrogation. There's my mode three. I'm sorry, not, uh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. It was one, two, three, four. Mode two, so let's go ahead and uh, interrogate him. Apologize for the error there. So, so we can see uh, diamonds. There's my diamond. So that's my wingman, right? Chia. Uh, unfortunately, he's now kind of uh, blobbed over with one with that uh, east tanker. So let's go ahead and uh, and lock that guy up. Notice it's uh, done the mode two, but it comes back with negative, which means I probably uh, locked my uh, the tanker instead. So locking that guy. So now notice I've got a, a, mo a positive mode two, which is which I know my wingman is one, two, three, four. I got the diamond up in the corner and I can uh, uh, NCTR him, which is uh, a short uh, inboard. It's showing up unknown because I'm, I'm probably too high to, uh, to be able to interrogate him. Okay guys, we've talked about the uh, kind of the peacetime uh, non-combat uses of the of the AI, the air to air interrogation side, to uh, find various players such as uh, tankers, like your specific tanker, or to find your wingman. Um, now let's go ahead and put it to uh, to use in, in a uh, combat scenario when you've got a uh, pretty cluttered environment with lots of friendlies and uh, and potential bandits uh, in relative close proximity. So right now uh, I'm going to use the EID side, like I talked about. I typically use the AI to find my wingman. So I've got the uh, mode two, uh, one and two set up to um, uh, be, uh, be set for that, especially the mode two since that's more discreet than the mode one. In fact, I'll just do mode two. And now my EID side, I've got it set up to mirror the, uh, the notional uh, ROE. For today, the ROE is a uh, lack of uh, mode one, one one correct code, uh, lack of any mode two. So uh, can't have any mode two players out there regardless of the code and uh, mode four alpha, obviously, since we're in the, uh, the current ATO. I've got it set up uh, to be auto PDT, so it'll work whether I'm in, uh, in single target track or twiz. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spawn in a, a couple of bad guys. So let's go ahead and do that. And we will go from there. So what I'm going to do is, is if you remember, all of these guys were our friendly tankers and wingmen and whatnot. And now we're going to start looking for the, uh, the, uh, the fulcrums. Okay, so that uh, that bra matches the uh, the AWAX call. I'll turn him off just so he doesn't talk over me the whole time. So one of the first things I do before I take a uh, rush to take a lock is uh, I'm going to go ahead and run my. I'm going to go ahead and run my EID matrix, and you can see I'm getting uh, correlated mode four circles. I'm getting some uh, mode one circles and some two normal circles in here, uh, but nothing on the, um, uh, the potential bandits that are uh, out there at range. So let's go ahead and lock those guys up, get my uh, altitude coverage set here a little bit better, and uh, lock them up at uh, 85 miles. And now it's going to automatically run that uh, EID matrix because I've got uh, auto PDT set. And notice now I've got all negatives with nothing latched up here up in the corner. I'm pretty confident that I can shoot these guys. Um, looks like they're uh, they're jamming me pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and break lock. I'll take a uh, another lock on these guys. In fact, let me narrow my search down a little bit because I know where those guys are. Go ahead and take a uh, lock going into Twiz. Speed that up here a little bit. So running the EID matrix again. And again, the PDT is the one with the star. So I know the, the right-hand bandit's uh, a bad guy because he's, he's uh, met the ROE. I can step over to the, uh, sorry, let's do that again. Lock the uh, left-hand guy. Notice it's running the EID matrix again. I'll go into Twiz. The jamming's kicking my ass here, so this isn't going to be a, a great, uh, representation. So for instance, if I were to, uh, to lock this guy up, in other words, uh, let's say they all got close together. It's running the EID matrix and now I've got positives. So he's positive, uh, mode four, he's positive one Charlie cause he's part of my mode one package. He's negative mode two, but he's already met some of the ROE criteria. I've got the circle up in the corner. So definitely don't shoot that guy. Um, so that's how you use the, um, the, uh, AAI and, P, uh, and EID uh, matrix on there. And again, you can, it's, it's purely up to you. Uh, the technique is to use the AI side for friendlies, EID for, for, uh, for hostiles. Uh, but again, you can set, it, set that up uh, any way uh, you guys want to. All right, that's it. Uh, not so that we've kind of done a, a quick run through of the, uh, of the uh, IFF system. Remember, IFF is what you are interrogating. Uh, over here so you can uh, turn on whatever uh, you want or you can just turn all these off and then use the console down in the lower left of the front cockpit uh, to, uh, to set that up. Remember the HOTAS uh, to interrogate is uh, it's left for greater than a second or outboard is AAI, inboard for greater than a second is EID and then inboard for less than a second is, uh, is Nectar uh, NCTR uh, for, the, uh, for the command there. Um, and that's it. Uh, not so is done with the, uh, uh, EID and, uh, IFF stuff. So thank you guys again for, uh, uh, checking out my YouTube. I'll, uh, continue to put some more content out there to, uh, to explain the, uh, strike eagle as best I can. Take care. Enjoy it. Not so's out. See you. Bye.